Hi everyone, I'm Moody Boo, the Fragrant Nomad. And today is kind of a combination video. Um, half of it is probably one of my most requested videos that I haven't done in ever, I don't think. Anyway, and the second half of it is perfume related. So this is my, my favorite products I've been using for 2021 and into 2022 um, for hair and skin and then also my favorite purchases not all of them but i picked five of my favorite fragrance purchases of 2021 to put to this video so the hair and skin um part of the video has been requested so much that i just thought okay i'm gonna do it i have a couple of new favorites so i might as well just get it done now and then the perfumes, of course, is my wheelhouse. So I'm going to start with the hair and skin products that I love. And if you're not interested in that, I'll try to remember to put a timestamp up here so that you can fast forward to the perfume portion of this video. So um, anyway, and I've said before I wasn't going to do any makeup because I don't wear a lot of makeup. I'm wearing zero makeup now. And I used to wear a little more but that's when I was more doing office work and so it was appropriate for me to put makeup on before I went to work but then the whole pandemic hit and I'm not going to wear any makeup here because then it's just going to transfer to the inside of my mask and, and stain it or something and I didn't want to take the time to do my eyes that seemed silly to me so um, I pretty much stopped wearing makeup very regularly um, uh, towards the end of 2020, beginning of 2021. So I'm not gonna, long story longer, I'm not gonna talk about makeup, not really. So, uh, but hair and skin, yes. Now I just turned 58 a little over a month ago, a month and a half ago. And um, I have done a lot of sun damage to my skin. You can see that I've got a, spot starting here and I think I have a dark spot starting there and I'm not gonna go bleach my face or do anything like that you know I may look in the future to products if it really bothers me that might lighten those old lady spots or old age spots or dark spots on my face sun damaged spots in the future but um you know, I, I and I'm you know I'm not opposed to whatever you want to do to your face. It's your face. Um, but for me, I've done Botox. I really liked it. I would probably do it again. Um, I was doing it because I was furrowing my brow a lot, and my 11s were super prominent. And uh, my husband said that I could bench press 100 pounds on those suckers, those muscles right there from furrowing my brow so much. But then I got eye surgery, and my eyesight got better. And um, so I wasn't furrowing it as much, but I still had the 11s and I was still doing it out of habit. So I got Botox um, in order to train myself to not furrow my brow, to not be used to doing that anytime I'm looking at something. And because I didn't need to anymore because my eyes were better. So, and it really, really helped. Um, my, those muscles are, it's almost smooth across between my eyes now. The, the lines are still there, but they aren't anything like they were. So yes, I would do Botox again. But other than that, I don't even moisturize as much as I should. I'm gonna be really honest, because um, my skin is so oily. And, but I have, I have real, like my T-zone is very oily, but then the rest of my face can be really dry. So I really need to moisturize. I've been really, um, opposed to it because I hate having pimples inside of wrinkles and I felt like all the moisturizers that I'd used in the past um, no matter if they were oil-based water-based whatever they were seemed to make me break out and being you know in my mid late 50s um, with an acne problem just isn't a look I want to achieve at this stage in my life so 
But then I did find a couple of creams that I really liked. Uh, one I'm out of, I used a Bobbi Brown cream that I really liked. It was real light, water-based, and didn't give me any issues. And then I also um, found this L'Occitane uh, heavy cream. I, I don't know if it's a heavy cream. It's just hydration cream and uh, with organic angelica water and essential oil. And I really like the natural ingredients in this. And it doesn't have a big odor or anything. It's basically odorless, which I like. My grandmother and my mom used to use these heavier creams that had this rose smell to them. And I just, I don't like that at all. And if I'm not mistaken, the Bobbi Brown cream had a little bit of a, a kind of a rosy floral aroma to it. So that's why I didn't repurchase it. And I really like this stuff. It's very light. It's not heavy at all. I, I don't think it's water-based. It feels like it has a little bit of oil in there, but not heavy. It's super light, really light. Um, and I, I've really enjoyed this stuff. I have repurchased this. This is my second um, bottle, jar, whatever of it. And you don't need much. It a little goes a long way with this. Now on to my favorite line of skincare, by far, hands down. And it was just serendipity that I came across it because it's not widespread at all. It's pretty specialty. I was at this little boutique on the Big Island and they had this skincare display. And uh, I was intrigued I, and it was a Hawaiian based, actually on the Big Island based uh, skincare line. And I really like supporting local businesses, especially Hawaiian businesses. And so I kind of talked to the lady that owned the boutique about it. She just raved on and on about this stuff. And she was younger than me, but she looked great. And she swore by it. So I made a splurge and I bought Pure Mana Soul Serum, this little tiny bottle. And it was like $140. 145 something like that and I'd never spent that much on this much skin stuff in the past <laughs> no so I don't know why I did it I guess just to support it and um, I really wanted to start doing something more for my face it's got a little crystal in it you have to shake it up to use it but this stuff is so good and it's an oil it's made from the the gals that started it um, on the Big Island own a macadamia farm I believe if I'm not mistaken and they wanted to know what to do with you know a lot of the nuts that they don't sell and you know to be eaten and so they wanted to like recycle I guess and and figure out a way of not having as much waste and come up with something that would be um, good for people and, and um, good for the environment. The Soul Serum though, hmm. I thought I'm gonna break out like a teenager during their period wearing this shit, you know? But, and you can see, it's not a real heavy oil. It's pretty light and you don't need much. I usually do two pumps and that's enough to cover my face. And I, oh, and it smells so good. It's made from macadamia nuts and coffee, uh, coffee beans. And there's other ingredients in there too. But those are the two main things that um, are in Soul Serum. And I use it on my neck and my decollete. And like I said, that two pumps takes care of my face and neck pretty good. And then I just rip the rest into my hands because it's great stuff. And no breakouts. But my skin, within oh, half an hour from now, my skin will feel like butter. It will be so soft. And I use this as often as I can remember. And always right out of the shower, I use it as well. Then I also have Vitality C, and this is what I use around my eyes. 
I'm not going to do it right now, but that's what I use around my eyes. I don't use it as much because I use the Soul Serum so much, and I usually get up there pretty good, so um, I don't tend to use the Vitality C as much as I probably should, but it's really good too. Very light oil. It has a bit of a color to it, like a just a hint of an almost an orange kind or amber kind of color to it. So that's kind of weird, and so I have to really rub it in, otherwise, you know, I... I have this ring around my eyes but it doesn't take much to rub it in. My latest acquisition from the House of Pure Mana is uh, this essential wash. I had been using a L'Occitane. It was like a milk foam makeup remover and it did okay but it wasn't great. I, I didn't think it did very well. So when I saw that Pure Mana had come out with a, a face wash that also removes makeup, I had to go there and oh, I'm in love with it. It works so well for me, even um, non or waterproof mascara, no problem, which I rarely wear, but I tried some, I put some mascara on to see how this did. It did great, I was so excited. And the other thing that's hard for me to get off my face is any highlighter that I put right here and right here. That's hard for me to get off sometimes. So sometimes I have to take a little face cream and go like this to get the rest of it off at the end of the night. But this stuff takes it off, no problem. So moving on from face to hair, I have a lot more hair stuff than I do face stuff. I tend to be loyal to a brand. When I discover that I really like a product from a house, um, no matter what it is, a perfume, hair, skin, I explore more into that house to see if they have other products that I might love as well. And that's been very successful for me. And the first one, my, my hair guru that moved out of state, I don't have anymore, she was the one that recommended this first brand, but. It, of course she sold it, but it was a local Washington state brand based out of Seattle. So I really, really wanted to try it and I love it. She used it on my hair when every time she did my hair, oh, so silky, so wonderfully soft and shiny. Right now my hair is, I'm going to be washing it, uh, wet washing it tomorrow. So um, it's kind of dull even right now, but um, <clears throat> you got to remember this hair is quite long and so it's quite old as well. So um, I have to be really careful how often I wet wash my hair. Anytime I get my hair wet, I condition the ends. Anytime. And um, I recommend that for anybody who has really long hair. Also another thing I do is I make sure anytime I rinse out my conditioner I use cool water sometimes too cold. My husband always gets out of the shower before I do. I'm always like, okay, time to rinse. All right, I'm out. <laughs> so um, always rinse it with cold water, always. And uh, I, if I put too many products on my hair, it gets really, um, it because it, it, my hair is so fine that it just, it gets really flat and drab looking and kind of oily feeling. So I have to be careful about how many products I use on my hair. Usually two is the max. Um, one other one other than my conditioner and that's it. That's all I use. So my first hair guru, um, she got me started on the house of seven. I just pulled these out of my shower so they look like shit. But the Rinzu for colored hair and then I also use the Kente Bond hair mask. Um, I used this one, the hair mask, maybe um, once every four months or something. I'll put it on and then, you know, get my hair damp, put it on, put a garbage bag over my head, and then uh, take my hair dryer and heat it up in there. It gets really silky when I do that. And then, of course, rinse it. And this shampoo is so good. It, it's the best shampoo for colored hair I had used up until this point. I had tried so many different brands, uh, Pureology, Redken, Mectris, um, gosh, just, just a bunch of salon quality uh, hair products on my hair when I color it. And I just, nothing touched this, nothing. And it's still tied for my favorite. 
Um, and this stuff works so well. I have used other masks that work just as well. These are, you know, fairly spendy too. Um, you, they're like, I, I want to say 25 bucks a piece, uh, 20, 25 bucks a piece, which is pretty spendy. A lot of times you can go to a beauty supply store and buy, you know, shampoo and conditioner like Pureology for 25 bucks for a big old thing of one of each. So, you know, it's just a matter of how much you want to spend on yourself, that's all. Now, I've only used this a couple times, but it worked really good for adding body. Oh my gosh, this loft, and this is a powder. This is just a powder that you put on your, it's not like a dry shampoo by any means. Um, it's a powder and you put it in your hair and you don't need much of it, and it just fluffs it up so much and gives it such nice body. Um, I just don't use it that often. Um, I don't know why. I, I just don't use it very often, but it works really well. It would be perfect for somebody with shorter hair. I, I think that's part of it, why I don't use it so often. But if somebody had shorter hair that wasn't weighted down by the gravity of their own locks, mm, you should check this out. And all of the seven products smell so good. Oh, they just, I'm telling you amazing amazing line another one that i use um not quite as often as this other one but this the seal spray the satara seal spray this one i have used on wet or dry hair um like right before i i uh, blow dry it or do something like that i'll use this it doesn't i don't think add a lot of hold but it adds shine and it makes it feel so soft this Rinzu Protect Spray I use a lot. This one I use anytime I go swimming. Fresh water, but especially salt water. I'll get my hair damp and, you know, get most of the moisture out and then spray this all over my, my hair. And it really helps keep my color in when I go snorkeling. Usually then I also will put it in a, a braid as well. But this is really what does it for keeping that my color from bleeding out into the salt water of the ocean. Um, yeah, I love this stuff. I take it with me to Hawaii every year. I stopped using mousse um, and hairsprays because I just, I'm the type, I like to run my fingers through my hair and I love it when my husband does. So I don't want my hair stiff. I, I just, I rarely, rarely, rarely use anything like that. It has to be for a specific event and a specific purpose. But then I discovered Seven's Mousse. This stuff is so good. I don't use this when it's damp. It's after I have blow dried it and um, I'm just setting in some of that lift that I've just accomplished blow drying it. I just put a little in my hands and this stuff is so concentrated. I mean, it, I just go squirt and whole bunch just rolls out of this wide spigot. Let me show you the spigot. This wide ass thing, you wouldn't believe how much comes out of that with one little toot. And <clears throat> and that's all I use for the most part. Just rub around the tips and kind of fluff it through my hair to kind of keep that style in so that it stays a little better on its own. Works so well. I love that mousse, love, love, love. And it, I can run my fingers through my hair. There's no crunching, no heavy stiffness, nothing like that. It hardly feels like there's anything in there at all. It just feels like my hair is thicker. My favorite thing to use um, right out of the shower, if I don't use Moroccan oil or an argan oil, sometimes I alternate. Um, but most of the time when I get out of the shower, the second product besides the conditioner that I use on my hair is this Kente Bond Reparative Spray from Seven, and it smells incredible. It's this beautiful, almost fruity, sandalwoody kind of a smell. Oh, it smells so good. And I spray this on my ends from about here down, and um, it's real light, but it just locks in that conditioner and that moisture and just makes my hair feel so soft and so shiny. This is probably my favorite product from Seven. I like this last product from Seven almost as much as I like the Kente Reparative Spray. 
and that's the diamond serum. Oh. What? This stuff, I use it. I mean, every time we go to Hawaii, I use it. And I've had this thing five years. And look, that's, can you tell? I don't know if you can tell how much is in there or not. But it comes to right here. And it's because this stuff is so concentrated. I am going to spray a little bit. You have to twist the top so it doesn't. But I'll show you how much I use in my hair. That much covers my hair. It's this heavy, heavy, thick kind of oil. But it, it's called Diamond Serum. Oh, and that smell, it's like a, another fruity woody kind of smell. But <clears throat> it leaves my hair like diamonds are just sprinkled all over it. It's so shiny. It's the perfect name for this. And it's so thick and it goes so far and it doesn't leave uh, heavy residue. It doesn't leave my hair um, weighted down or anything. It just leaves it almost blindingly shiny and soft. And that's another good one that I've used um, because it's so thick. I'll use it before I go into the water um, when I go snorkeling um, on the big island as well. I just rubbed it into my hands and it just absorbed. That shows you it feels heavy, but it does not leave a heavy residue on my skin. And that shows you it's not gonna leave a heavy residue on your, your hair either, because it's like it's just gone. Now I have a new hair guru and she's wonderful. It took me a while to pick one out, but I found a fabulous gal. She recommended um, one of these products that I absolutely adore. And the other one I'd been really curious about, so I went ahead and explored it and got it myself. And I'm not disappointed. The shampoo I've been using, I alternate between this one and seven. Um, Olaplex number four. What can you say about it? It's amazing. It's amazing, amazing shampoo. It is so concentrated. This thing will last me forever. Um, it has kind of a citrusy smell to it, which I really enjoy, without smelling like, you know, one of those kiddo shampoos. Um, this stuff is so concentrated. I use about a quarter to a 50 cent piece amount of, that's how much I, I pour into my hands, about the size of a quarter or 50 cent piece. And that cleans my hair. <laughs> the whole head down the shaft, everything. Amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. I love it. I haven't tried anything else from Olaplex, but I'm having a feeling that I probably will. The other thing, she sold this. And I just was curious about it and asked her, um, what she thought of it and she said, oh, I love it, you know, but you were kind of into this other thing So I didn't know if you wanted to try something like this and I said, yeah Hmm, love it um, San Francisco moisturizing conditioner um, By Pulp Riot This stuff is incredible And I don't think it doesn't really have a smell. It just smells like conditioner, you know but this stuff works so well without being super heavy. Again, fine hair, um, so it can't be heavy. Um, and this stuff is not. After I get out of the shower and towel dried, I'll just start going like this. And it it's not slick at all, but my hair will just start kind of getting the knots out already just with my fingers before I even start using uh, the brush I bought from her that I love that you're gonna see next <laughs> This stuff works so well, and I, we're talking old lady colored for years 
fine hair. And um, yeah, it works great. I don't know if it's supposed to be for young folk. Uh, by the look of it, it kind of is, but don't let that stop you. This stuff works great on my hair. The last things I wanted to show you that I love, 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 um, that I bought from my hair guru. Um, she was selling them there out of her shop and I just went whack over them. That's my wet brush, jasmine brush. And this one, my Ariel brush, this is a wooden brush. This is like a plastic brush. This one is incredible. It's a detangler and it works so well. It doesn't pull my hair, it doesn't pull out hair, it doesn't snag it, it doesn't, you know, when you hit a knot, and it'll pop those hairs um, because it can't get through that knot. This thing just goes through most of them like they're nothing. So, yeah, and come on now, uh, Ariel and Jasmine, come on. I like them, I like, I like these kind of things. <laughs> All right, so that's the end of my hair and skin segment of this video. So now, on to the perfumes! Let's do it. I'm not going to talk a lot about any of these perfumes because I think I've done, yeah, a review on all but one of them, and, and that's up and coming. So the first perfume, and I could have added so many more, but I just wanted to pick out five perfumes that I'm super glad that I bought during the year of 2021. And this first one might surprise some of you. Armani in love with you. This one I'm so glad I got because it reminds me that I can't turn my nose up at designer fragrances. I really can't. Or celebrity fragrances. I've got Rihanna's new Fenty EDP that I adore. Um, <clears throat> I have a Spice Bomb Infrared, which I absolutely love by Victor and Rolf. And those I bought all um, in the last 12 months. And so it just, I just am so glad that I get perfumes like this. And it, this helps remind me to not just go for indie, niche, Middle Eastern perfumes, but remember that designer perfumes have some really quality perfumes out there. Now, is this groundbreaking? No. This is a Fruituli kind of perfume. It's very La Via Belle. Um, you know, some of those, uh, Flower Balm, Jimmy Choo. It's very much in that vein, but I'd forgotten how much I love Fruitulis. And this is so smooth and so buttery and so decadent and really high quality. It is Armani after all. It's got like black currant, raspberry, cherry, patchouli, a little bit of wormwood in there. But you don't really get the wormwood. I don't anyway. The deep dry down may be a little, but this is just all for Julie, and I adore it. I absolutely adore this perfume. And I'm so glad I remembered that uh, designer perfumes have a place. They have a lane in my life. Anyway, Armani, in love with you. I am. And this one reminds me, I need to expand my horizons where I buy my perfumes. This is by Genre Perfumes, and this is Essence off of Etsy's website. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh my God, it's so good. It's so smooth and rich and sweet and high quality and well blended. So off of Etsy's, off of uh, Genre's website, this is Mandarin and Raspberry and Bergamot, Jasmine, Rose, Caramel Accord, Saffron Accord, Benzoin, Sandalwood, Vanilla, Amber, and White Musk. And this, I'll have a full review coming soon, but this stuff, this should be on at Lucky Scent, at Javoy, at Max Aroma. This stuff is that freaking good, but it's like 50 bucks for an ounce, so there is that. <laughs> it's inexpensive, so maybe high luxury places and, and like Neiman Marcus don't want something this inexpensive. They'd have to jack the price up to $150, $200, and then they might sell it. But I mean, and look at this bottle. 
it's this really cool hologram um, kind of a, a front and it just really high quality really high quality <sighs> love this stuff a review is coming essence by genre and we can't forget about my favorite sesame honey coffee perfume by navi Tooth, the embrace oh my god it's so good oh wow oh just a delightful gourmand but a different kind of gourmand perfume it performs amazing. You can get some really good deals uh, at Nobby Tooth too, especially with some of the older releases, which I guess this would be considered a little older. It was last year. Um, but I think I paid 145 for it, but they have a lot of specials. So you need to look out for them if you're interested in one of their fragrances. This one tends to sell out, I think. I'm pretty sure I saw it was sold out. Might be back in stock, but oh, love, 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 love. Maybe this one and Exo Brandy are my two favorites, I believe. I don't know. I really like Absolute Show and Arcanum. Ooh, Exalt Nui too. But I, I, yeah, I think this is up in the, the top one or two for sure. Beautiful stuff. Oh my god, I can still smell it. It smells so good. Ah, Navi Tooth, the embrace. <sighs> Gonna be my go to spring perfume next year for show. And that is Shabad Orangery Musical. Musical. Oh, it smells so good. And it's so weird because it's like this Neroli Orange Blossom Bomb. One of the, the perfumes I can't stand is Neroli Portofino. Um, it's super soapy. It's this soapy Neroli that just makes my head explode when I smell it, not in a good way. Um, I just, I, I, I've tried the other flankers from Neroli Portofino. No, don't work for me neither. But this one is Neroli and Orange Blossom and I am in love. There's no soapy to it none whatsoever just this sweet fresh kind of green floral um, mixed with this this almost decadent gourmandy kind of floral aroma and citruses there's a little anise in there give it a little interest oh it's so good and it performs so well it's a mid-range perfume but i'm telling you next spring it'll be hard to see me not wearing this one almost daily. Well, except for when I got to go to work because I work at an allergy clinic and I can't wear perfume. But, oh, love, love this stuff. Shabad Orangery Musical. And the last perfume I'm going to talk about, <sighs> Zoologist has done it again because Chipmunk. <sighs> this is one of the best nutty perfumes I've ever smelled. To me, this is just a nutty, woody cardamom bomb. It's, it's so good, it's so good. So this is this wonderful, rich, just warm aroma of roasted nuts and a bunch of different woods from guyac wood and cedar and oak. And then you add this warm, rich, delightful cardamom note and oh, my God, <laughs> this stuff's wonderful. Oh, it's so good. It's so unisex. It's got a, a greenness to it, and yet it's almost a little aromatic at times. It's a real shapeshifter, and it's so beautiful in the artwork, right? Right? Is amazing. Mid-range. I think it's a little closer to, it's like 160, 170, something like that. But mm, it's right up there with Camel and Koala. Those are the other two that I own from Zoologist. And I just think the world of this house, it's amazing. Like I said, I could have added so many more perfumes to this list. But 
the video was going to be long enough and I didn't want to break it up into two. So, yep. Anyway, I guess that's about it. Those are my favorite hair, skin, and perfumes um, for 2021. Um, the perfumes I all purchased last year, some of the hair and skin products I did not. Anyway, uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for the video request as well. And don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell and comment if you want. If you don't, it's all good. I still love you. And use your own nose and hair and skin. Peace.